Hello everybody, it's the Film Optimist. New camera, new setup. Doing this off the desktop. Um, I felt like, you know, that in my last review of The Amazing Spider-Man, um, I did a, a, a huge disservice to the character of Spider-Man. He's my favorite superhero. So why the fuck did I not really talk about that film? Um, I kind of mentioned that I, I grew up on Toby. Toby. You know, um, so Tobey Maguire is like, was Spider-Man for me for the longest time. Um, but anybody, anybody could play Spider-Man. Uh, Leo DiCaprio, my favorite actor, almost played, played him. Daniel Radcliffe, Harry Potter, thought about playing him. That would have been fucking sick. <laughs> anybody can play Spider-Man. And I think I'd be cool with it. Fucking Nick Cage technically played Spider-Man, but I mean, he could, he voiced Spider-Man, a Spider-Man. But he could play Sp I he'd play Spider-Man, I'd be fucking all over it. I don't care, because I love Spider-Man. Um I didn't talk I didn't talk a lot. I'm gonna rectify that um in this review of the Amazing Spider-Man 2 by talking about some of the stuff I left out in the last review. Um number one, I forgot to mention I, I mentioned briefly the lizard was the main uh villain. Risa Fons, is that how you say his name? Rice I fans. He plays the lizard. Uh, Dr. Kirk Connors um, loses his arm. Um, I forgot how. Like, there's a disease that took his fucking arm or some shit. Um, and he experiments on with lizards that can regrow limbs. So he injects himself with like lizard DNA to try to regrow the arm. And it fucking works. But then, oh shit, he turns into a giant lizard. Um... And I was happy as fuck that they finally touched on a villain that we haven't seen in the, the films yet. Um, like, there's a lot of villains, a lot of the rogues gallery that could be um, really well utilized for uh, the Spider-Man films. And uh, the Lizard, I was like, cool. With this new series, we're getting new villains. I'm all for that. Amazing Spider-Man came out like two years after uh, the original Spider-Man trilogy ended, they just were like, Spider-Man 3 was such a flop that we're going to just reboot the series. And two years later, I was like, what the fuck? They're, they're rebooting this really fast. But they did, they did an excellent job at doing so. They made it feel different enough, more modern, um, which was really cool. I talked a little bit about the, the romance between uh, Peter Parker and Gwen Stacy. If you know the comics, Gwen was his first love, not Mary Jane. Um, I think that's really cool that they touched on that. Not just touched on it. They fucking, they went all, they went ham. Making this a, a romantic comedy with some drama in it. Um, and I didn't talk about Captain George, George Stacy, I think his name is. Captain Stacy is Gwen Stacy's father. Works for the NYPD. Um, he is a huge character. Um, he... Played by Dennis Leary, Willem Dafoe look alike. I think it's cool that there's a connection between the first film and the and of each Spider-Man series, or these first two anyway. That there's a look alike. Uh, Willem Dafoe played Green Goblin, and Dennis Leary, who sometimes gets mistaken for Willem Dafoe, and vice versa, played uh, Captain Stacy. I think that's pretty cool. Captain Stacy, and they both um, spoiler alert, they both die, and their deaths have very meaningful. Um, Storyline implications for the character of Spider-Man. Uh, Captain Stacy hates Spider-Man. He hates his vigilante. Um, there's always a character like this in Spider-Man, where there's a cop who just wants to do the right thing, and um, here comes Spider-Man fucking things up for them, making them look bad. Um, but it's just in this version, you know, he happens to be the father of the girl that Peter Parker really likes. Um, he then moves on. So he dies. Um, the The lizard wants to um, release this toxin, turning everybody into uh, lizards citywide, and eventually the world, of course. Ha ha ha! You know, human extinction. Let's turn everyone into lizards. Fucking straight out of a comic book. It's just so absurd, but it's. I liked it. I liked it a lot. Um, this new new movie picks up. Well, at the end of the last movie. Um, George Stacy is, is dying, Captain Stacy, and he's like, when he removes his mask, he reveals that he's Spider-Man, and Gwen Stacy knows that he's Spider-Man as well. He's like, hey, um, I, I want to protect your daughter, and he's like, just do me a favor, 
don't see her anymore. Do not see her anymore. Immediately, like, he stays away from her, but they smile at each other in class, and he's like, you already know that this isn't, he doesn't give a fuck. Like, he's gonna still be with his daughter. Um, because his daughter could be hurt, um, and Spider-Man knows this. Huge moment in the comic books. Um, we'll get there, we'll get there. Uh, Spider-Man 2 picks up. The romance is very on again, off again. At the very beginning, Spider-Man breaks up with her. He's like, "I've been, your father told me, like, we need to stop doing this. But immediately, he's like, I, I want to be with you. I want to be with you. And this is annoying for some. I really bought their romance a lot more than I uh, bought Tobey Maguire and Kirsten Dunst's romance. Um, like, they were really good in the second one. The first one, you know, he has a crush on her. The third one killed that romance for me. Like, oh my God, shut the fuck up. This one was really well done. I think they really hit the nail on the head. Emma Stone played a great Gwen Stacy. Um, they move on and uh, they, you know, they're doing their off and on shit. Who's the villain? Who's the big bad this time? Electro, Jamie Foxx. When I heard this, you know, of course there was the criticism of like, oh, a black, a black Electro, and it's like obviously this is like this takes. Um, inspiration from the Ultimate series, Ultimate Electro is all blue-skinned, crackling electricity in his body. It looks fucking badass. Um, the original Electro has that, like, lightning burst mask that looks stupid as shit. In comic book form, it's, it's kind of funny, but it does not come off as intimidating at all. Yeah, he can shoot fucking lightning bolts out of his hands but electricity but he's it doesn't look intimidating the blue skin that looks terrifying as shit what i didn't like about jamie fox's electro is that he's just a big fan of spider-man he's a huge fan and spider-man knows his name oh, spider-man knows my name and he's he comes off as a fucking like an outcast kind of like there's something mentally wrong with him He's always a loser. He's always been a loser. But then he falls into like this fucking this electrical shit, and it shocks him. And I think it's at Oscorp, and he turns into just pure electricity, and he can go into light sockets and shit. It's pretty cool. I think it's done really well. But man, it was like, and the, they didn't they didn't take the writers didn't. They didn't take notes on the original trilogy and what made that shit. You know, um, the third movie has like three different villains and three different arcs that are going on. It's a lot. They're like, we can do that, but like more convoluted. Let's do it. And um, da what's his name? Dale DeHaan? Dane DeHaan? Is that his name? Who, who was in some kind of superhero horror film that did big numbers. Yeah, Dane DeHaan. <laughs> He was in Chronicle. Come here, buddy. We're not doing this again. Wee! Dane DeHaan was in Chronicle. Um, two years before this came out, and Chronicle's kind of a superhero movie. He has superpowers. Um, he shows up in this film as Harry Osborn. Um, <laughs> Harry Osborn. Um, major character in the original trilogy and in uh this they try to make him as important in this one except they never mention him in the first film their best their childhood best friends um i don't have a big problem with him not mentioning harry in the first film because they haven't seen each other in years but then they they, they pretend like they were really close friends and it was this big this huge deal like they just fall back into being friends Green Goblin in Amazing Spider-Man 2, his father, Norman, is dying from a disease. Turns out it's genetic, and uh, Harry's going to die from it as well, unless they, they do something about this. Um, so he's like, I can get a drop of Spider-Man's blood because he has regenerative power. I don't even know how they know all this shit. But all Spider-Man has to do is give this motherfucker some blood. Like, he just has to show up as Spider-Man, here's my blood. But he tells him, like, no, for some reason. Really stupid decision on his part. Um, and Harry Osborn's like, so I'm just going to die? Like, you're just going to let me die? And um, the 
It's like, this is really stupid. This is really dumb. Like, he had no reason. And then he uses Electro against Spider-Man. Um, releasing him from prison after him and Spider-Man have an altercation. They, they fight uh, in Times Square. And he's like, Spider-Man, you remember me? He's like, oh, yeah, yeah. I yeah, kind of. Yeah, but then he gets mad. Like, you don't remember me. You treat me like a freaking idiot. I'm like, oh, my God, who cares? And then they get into this big fight. Then he's locked up. Harry later on releases Electro. And it's like, it's only two villains but it's still too much um because harry goes down into oscorp and he finds the goblin armor the goblin suit the glider and it's ba it's basically like the first original trilogy where he just has like armor and a mask but then like he has like this fucking like goblin-esque face that's like just really creepy and ugly veins going through his head and shit all over his face um the final battle, he's fighting Electro. Um, Gwen is there, even though he tells her not to be there. But she's like, I want to help. And he's like, okay. Um, Emma Stone has stated she wanted the character to do the same thing that... Uh, wanted to do the same thing that happened in the comics. She wanted to be true to the comic books. The history of Gwen and Stacy is that they were madly in love. They are high school sweethearts. Um, Stan Lee wanted them to get married. Now, the story goes, he went on vacation. So other people started writing a book, writing Spider-Man for him while he was out. And they killed off Gwen Stacy. Uh, Gwen is falling. Like, Green Goblin knocks her off of a bridge or some shit. Spider-Man flip, catches her, and breaks her fucking spine, killing her instantly. And it's like, it's horrible. It catches, just, you see the crack. He's like, I got you, and he pokes her. He's like, no, 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 and he's holding her dead body, and he's like, holy shit, this is fucked up. Reason why the writers did this is they they wanted kids to relate. They wanted kids to relate to Spider Man because marriage is stupid and for adults. Um, so they didn't want that. So Stanley had to go back to the fucking drive. Come back like, what the fuck? And he had to make Mary Jane um, his new love interest. And that's why Mary Jane has so much more play than Gwen Stacy does. Gwen Stacy, though, is a huge, huge character. So much so that, you know, there's Spider-Gwen. There's an alternate universe of Gwen Stacy. So that's how important the character is to the mythos. And that's how important the death is, too. It's very instrumental in making Spider-Man who he is. Even on par with Uncle Ben's death. Like, it's that's how important it is. And Emma Stone was like, I want to do that. So, with that being said, are they going to do it in the second film? There's no way. And they keep talking about how, throughout the film, like, are they going to, will they, won't they? Are they going to be together? Are they not? And it's it's frustrating for some, but for me, I really like that aspect. I like, I, I buy their romance. And they were actually dating in real life, so. They, uh, they talk about going to, the, to Paris. He's like, Spider, he's like, she wants to go to Paris. And he's like, I don't want you to go to Paris. But I want you to follow your dreams. And blah, 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 blah. But then he's like, I can go with you. And then I can... Maybe Spider-Man needs Paris. And I was like, that'd be interesting for a sequel. A Spider-Man in Paris. But I, I doubt that's going to happen. Gwen Stacy's going to die, isn't she? Final battle. Um, I think he... I don't know if he removes his mask, but he tells Harry, Harry, it's me, it's Peter. And Harry's like, oh. and then he sees Gwen, and he's like, sees him, and he's like, ha ha, catches her, takes her to the top of like a clock tower. Spider-Man chases after her. This is after he beat Electro. Run, uh, flip, 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 chasing after her. Beautifully done scene. Um, I'm like, there's no way. This is a kid's movie. Like, kids are in the audience watching this shit. This is like Mufasa and Lion King, almost. This is like, holy shit. Th there's no way. She falls. Green Goblin just lets her go. He flies off. What is it going to be, Peter? You're going to chase after me? You're going to go after me? And she's, he's just like, fuck. Well, then he thwips, and it's a great it's slow-mo. She's falling. There's, like, glass falling past her. Um, the, the, the web comes down, and it turns into a hand, like, really trying to reach for her. It's like, and then it catches her, but not in time. She hits the ground and bounces off the, the, the ground. Why some people argue and say no, it was the web that killed her. 
they've changed it in the movie so that like in the first film he catches she he throws her off a bridge and then he catches her and she like jerks but she's fine like she gets up from it um this one it's maybe it's a far farther fall and that's the argument that that's what killed her no you see her hit the ground and bounce back up dead goes down there i think there's blood coming out of her nose she's just she's fucking dead and it's like oh my god um even though it's very rushed which i hate and they've just kind of it feels like they just put green goblin here for that very reason it's still pretty like it's they hit they hit it on the head they did they did a very good job what made me excited for this film as well or what made me excited after the fact was that they fucking teased the sinister six film i was like holy shit yeah and then like spider-man quits <coughs> being spider-man we've seen that before but he quickly becomes spider-man again when a kid steps out in front of rhino played by paul giamatti he's in a giant mechanized rhino suit suit it's a big fucking mech and it's like okay it's all right it's the, it's the ultimate version it's not the fucking comic book face and then a rhino, an actual rhino fucking like footy pajamas looking shit but it's like all right and then but like it's what's stupid is the kids there the kids like doing the whole like no like i'll fight you and then spider-man whips in and then he's like uh hey you did a good job buddy high five and it's like there's gun like this fucking rhino thing has guns spider-man whips in and then like the end and then and the mid like mid credit sequence is the Sinister Six film, which would be Goblin, um, it looked like Goblin, Black Cat, uh, let's see, let's go to, Sin let's go to Sinister Six, yeah, they're gonna do a Venom movie, it looked like, it looked like it was going to be Green Goblin, Rhino, Black Cat, and they had, like, other things floating in the background, I was like, and they had like an asylum, Blackgate Asylum or some shit, which is like the Arkham Asylum of uh, of the Spider-Man universe. Spider-Man Arkham. I think it's called Blackgate. Ar Arkham. Arkham Asylum. It's called Blackgate, right? It's just talking about how close the new Spider-Man game is. I think it's called Blackgate, and that's where all the villains are. So, um, that made me excited, and apparently they're still doing it. Um, Sony really, they have ideas, but with the, the reason why The Amazing Spider-Man is looked at with so much negativity is that they made a lot of fucking poor choices. Like, the, I forgot the whole point of, like, the first film. Like, we see his parents for a little bit. His parents go off, we don't know what happened to them. And the second one, we find out that they were killed. They were a part of some kind of Oscorp bullshit, whatever. And they were killed in, a, in an airplane. And there's like a subway and you put in like these coins and fucking these tokens and a fucking sub, sub, subway fucking train comes out of the ground and you can go in there. It's like fucking secret lab. And it's like, what is all this shit? What is all this shit? What the fuck is going on? This is not a video game. We are not playing this to... Like, just fucking have them flip, flip and fight people. Um, but overall, I enjoyed it. I, I saw this movie... I don't even remember when I saw the first one. I know I saw it in theaters with my mom. We see every, we've see seen every Spider-Man movie except the third one. In theaters. Um, so we saw this one, and we made it a twofer. We saw this one, and then we saw Captain America's uh, Winter Soldier. Uh, two sequels. And I was like... I never would have in my wildest dreams have picked Captain America over Spider-Man, but I did. Captain America Winter Soldier is a much better film than Amazing Spider-Man 2. Much better uh, much better structure. Um, but I still, as a Spider-Man fan, I fucking love Spider-Man. Spidey. He's a... It's a, it's a movie. It's a fun movie. Overall. <laughs> It could have been much worse. I could have been like, oh my god, this is terrible. And for a guy that actually likes Spider-Man 3, see, I don't really have that much shit to talk on Spider-Man. So that's my review. I feel better with this one. I feel like I actually covered a lot more. 
a lot more ground. Can you say, can you say bye bye? Can you say thank you all for watching? Like, comment, and subscribe. We don't say that. We don't do that. But maybe you should. That's why you got no nobody watching the videos except your mama, except my grandma. Fuck. And um and Michael from work. Michael watches too. Okay, say bye bye. I'm gonna try to put you down now. You guys have a good one. And uh and take care.